Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial with me Pug Gaming and today we are looking at the procedural objects mod. One of the most revolutionary changing mods in my opinion, very close to or if not very equal to the move it mod tool and this mod in particular really has a great addition of power to the game. Now in summary the mod itself allows you to edit all props and buildings and basically adapt it to how you want using the clever vertex customizational features. You can also add your own textures as well and adapt any building that is already created on the workshop. So let's jump into a few of those important factors. So step one, you need to find yourself a prop or building that you want to use to mess around with. Firstly, I'm gonna use these untextured square cubes just to make life easier and you can see a lot better of what I'm doing because it's a very basic shape. And as you can imagine, some of these buildings have a lot of vertexes to click upon. So the first job is to select it and click on the procedural objects button which will generate it into a procedural object. Once you've done so you'll have another menu and your object will come up with all of these extra pluses on. Now each one of these pluses allows you to modify the shape of the building or the prop that you're using. And how you do that is very simple. You can hold the shift and alt key as you're using to allow you to generate smaller movements. So if we first of all click on these points here, as you can see each one we do only selects the one, but if you hold the control button and press it, this means that you'll select a number of them to allow you to do multiple movements. So as you can see here, we are doing page up and page down whilst we move it. So this is moving the vertices up and down, and with a combination of holding shift for a smaller movement and alt for a slow movement, which can also be used together, it makes life a lot simpler when you're really trying to define your shape to that perfection. Not only can you go up and down with the page up, page down button, but you can also select the sides of an object and pull them out long ways. You can actually increase the size of the object itself. And to do that is very simple. Do the same thing to select the point you want to move, the face you want to move, and then use the arrow buttons to move in the direction you want and it will take a bit of time depending on how you're looking at the object to which of the arrow keys will be doing what you wanted to do but it doesn't take long to really work that out and you don't always just have to click and control on all of these faces there is another feature that's been added to the procedural objects mod where you can basically highlight so what you need to do is right click on your mouse and drag over the points you want to have this is a quick way to enable yourself to click a whole face front and if you imagine some of the more complex buildings have more than four points to move so so doing that allows you now to mess around and make life a little bit easier and quicker for you now talking of quicker and easier another feature that is often missed by users is the move it feature so this allows you just to move the actual piece in hand higher and lower it and just make life a little bit simpler However, if you like the whole tradition of Planet Coaster and the way you can move those objects around, you have the three point vertices here as well that are possible to move these around. So whichever you prefer, you can do so. Now another big feature is the ability to resize these objects and this is great, this really is. If you're working on some uh, flooring for example, you can quite easily move this around and enlarge things that shouldn't really be enlarged, which also saves on the prop count. Now the rotation section of this mod is sensational. It's a really unique design to have within a mod and you can really change the look of any prop and building by turning it around. Very interesting for those creative people. Certainly something to really mess around with and have fun. And after all that, if you're not happy with what you've done, you can click off and just delete it and everything disappears and you can start again. And if you thought that was near the end of these features, you're wrong. The next one is sensational, I really do like this idea. It's the ability to copy and paste actual objects you've already created. So this saves a lot of time and you do so using the standard computing terms of copy and paste with Control C, Control V. But that's not it. 
There's also another function within this facility that really does make it a game changer. And that is the ability to copy and paste and also relate the height to what you've just done. So we can add this prop here, change the height, copy it, control C, paste it, control V, and you'll see it's not there yet, but by pressing H, the object will move to the exact same height as the one we've just created. So this really does make life a lot easier and really helps you out when you're designing something very complex that height really does matter. Now here's a clever method to take full advantage of these new features. Just picking a standard staircase, you can plop that down and rather than adding additional props by adding more next to it to increase the length, you can simply go into the vertex customizational tool, highlight the one side and drag it out. Very, very good way to save on the prop count, which we all know us heavy detailers are something that we're always scared of. And to do this, it's very simple to do, as you can see here. As long as you find out which key you need to press to drag it out, the rest is simple. And this is a technique that I've been using quite a lot in my current City Skyline series, Project Monaco, and certainly this next one as well. You also have the ability to push the prop or building into the ground without any consequences of the terrain moving. And as you can imagine, that's a huge thing to be able to add into the game. Being able to move this around and reduce the height of the stairs does make a completely different set of stairs. And you can do this with buildings as well, so if you take for example a skyscraper, you can bury half it into the ground and create the same skyscraper, but at a much smaller size in height. And that's really good for a skyline if you want to use the same building, but the creator hasn't created the reduced heights. And again, making sure you take it for full advantage to copy and paste and hold in the H button to get the levels the same as the last if needs be. Now talking of Project Monaco, this was a section I worked on a number of weeks back and look how easy this is. So we have got a custom building here, which is a set of apartments, which are going to be on the workshop very soon. If not, they're already on there. And what you can do here, you can bury this apartment into this ground section here. So with areas that have very tough terrain, but you want to still clip in those buildings using the procedure objects mods, you're able to do so so much easier and we can higher and lower these areas. And obviously the difficult thing about this, if you're using the Move It mod tool, which again, fantastic mod, make sure you've got that as well. The ability with this is you can copy and paste it and hold the H key again to create those levels and make the plopping down of these buildings so much easier because if you're moving along terrain, as you can see here, the building does go up and down. Whether you've copied it or not, it doesn't matter. So here, pressing the H, boom, straight down, we can place this on top perfectly. And going back to my earlier comments of saving on the prop count, you can also take the already made um, prop or asphalt and change the scale and size and make them larger so you've got to place less down. And obviously, doing it through procedure objects anyway doesn't add to the prop count. But not only that, you can also use the feature we looked at earlier, the rotate feature to change the angle of these as well. So you can create some ramps and all different unique sort of styles. You could even create a proper asphalt wall if you wanted to. But what we can do here, we can really change the angles and look at that. You can really use that to accommodate a section of your road or anything really. It's a, such a versatile thing to do. And to give you an idea of how simple it is to accommodate into the game, here we are using the Monaco Pier and we're using exactly the same functionality as we just saw a minute ago with this to create a different rotation of the actual pier to basically generate a little down pier to push the boats into. So as you can see here, very simple, we are going to change firstly to the scale. We can change the height, sorry, the scale of this if we wanted to, but more importantly is the rotation. And remembering to hold the left shift button for smaller movements allows you to get a lesser 
um, angled change. So that means you can really get the slope that you want to achieve. And as you can see here, very simple then, we click on the move tab to be able to move it by hand. Using the up and down on the page up and page down option, we can then place it down and get a really nice looking runway. And one thing that I do love about this mod and the creator Simon is he releases so many updates and we've had a recent patch which is exceptionally good. We are now able to change the default rendering options for the buildings. And what I mean by that is we can change how long and far the distance is for rendering. So as you can see, as standard it's around the 900 mark and we can change it in game, which is very simple to do. And you can see how this works here. The current building disappears at a very small height but going back into it we can then adjust that and really change the distance but now this option allows us to change it as a default so in your menu you can go to procedure objects and change it to the highest value or whatever you want to change it to and now if we place down the exact same building you can see automatically the default is 16,000 and also zooming out it stays there the whole time so this is really good for you guys who want to do cinematics or just have buildings not disappear when you're playing the game from a distance. Not only that, but now the highlight option is available. So the building in the middle is procedural objects and you can see it highlights red. Whereas the other two are just standard models which don't highlight at all. And the most, most recent one, which is a very, very good one to add in, is now you have the ability to click on the vertex plus signs and drag them out with the mouse. And the best way to do so is if you highlight the one you want to use, click on it with your mouse button to highlight the red cross and then click on it again with your mouse on the left button and drag it out. You do need to hover over for a little bit first so the mod recognizes that you want to move it rather than click it but this is another game changer for the mod. If you do not prefer to use the keyboard you can now do this by hand which I know a lot of you would much rather prefer. And that pretty much wraps up the edition of the tutorial for the procedure object. A big, big thanks and shout out to Simon who has created a very, very good mod here. And I hope that my examples and my demonstration will make you understand this mod a little bit better and really take full advantage of it. Anyway guys, if you like the video, hit that like button. Think about subscribing if you want to see more. I will leave you there and I will catch you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching and all the best.